everyone. I'm out here with my friend Glenn, and I'll show you him in a minute. We're uh, out trying to collect fish again. Um, so far, we've, we've worked really hard over in that area over there, and where we started last week and did okay. Glenn's going to pan around and show you where we're Inside the oyster shell, I dumped the oyster shell out and he came out. So we're gonna we're gonna take a look at him. So we're gonna go ahead and let's point the camera down in here. Let's get him out of here. There he is. There he's right here. See him? It's an adult size plenty, a good size one too. Alright, that's a male. Tell by all the color. You see the pretty orange on him? So that's a welcome addition. I'm going to put him in this little photo tank so we can get a good look at him. Hey everyone, we fit, switched spots. Um, the other spot was pretty good. We got two bunnies, we got one little tiny one that I let go. Because they haven't, they don't fare very well. It's tough to get those them to eat the right size food. So we're at a new spot. Glenn caught uh, several small fish called spot. They're related to croakers. So we're going to keep a few of those for the oyster reef tank. So that's a new species for us. Um, he's using a, an ice fishing rod, trying to catch blunnies with it. Little tiny jigs and pieces of bait. Um, it looks like fun. We've got some fish traps out. The fish traps have worked well today. They caught, oh, you just missed a fish. Um, the fish traps have caught uh, mama chogs, um, skillet fish, and gobies. Um, so yeah, we've, it's, everything we've tried has done something well. So uh, we've got three fish traps out there. One my homemade one that I showed you last time. Glenn's got some more conventional, conventional ones. Um, he's got an umbrella net that he's got out there. We're all geared up this time. All right, he's got a fish. Oh, he got off. He got off. All right, we'll film a little bit and then uh, see him catch a fish here using ice fishing equipment and little pieces of razor clamp bait. So far, I think all he's caught with it is spot. But uh, he's getting lots of bites. Let's zoom in on that rod tip. You can see how sensitive just just when it just pops up and down. Yeah, it's probably from the wind mostly. There was a bite. Oh, did you see that? Yep. Let's see him catch one. Of course, now that he's on film. Do fish traps work catching blennies? Well, guess what? Look at all those mama chogs. Glenn caught in his trap. My trap caught one mama chog. His caught many. But there's a blenny in here. There it is, a female. See her? She's Absolutely. so pretty. So we're going to keep her and keep a few of these mama chogs. We're not going to keep all of them, but we're going to keep a few of them. But that's awesome. Good job. Just a standard fish trap baited with uh, razor clamps. So let's take a look at this female blenny. All those mama chogs, that's crazy. But look at this female blenny. She's just gorgeous. Fat with eggs too. She's ready to spawn even. We'll match her up to that female, the, the male that we just caught.
All right, real quick. Here's some of the mama chogs. That's just a few of them that we got. So I'll probably keep four or five more of these. We got four in the tank. So the oyster roof's pretty big. We're doing good. Now we need cheap set minnows, more blennies. Can never have enough blennies. I can't say that enough. Here we are at the bay. Beautiful out here. All right, folks, we uh, decided to go back to the spot right over my shoulders where Glenn got the, the big female bunny. So we came back here because traffic is really messed up and going east is impossible. There's an accident on the other side of the bridge and traffic is just backed up like crazy. Anyway, um, we got another, I just got another blenny in the, with the dip. And the male blennies that I found have been inside oyster shells and inside the oyster shell is a bunch of eggs. Um, and I will show that to you tonight. But right now it's kind of hard to see them. Well, maybe we can do it. Hold on. I'll right. um, show you what we got. Here's the, the oyster shell. And if you look inside, if we get the sun just right. Let me zoom in. try to position this so that you can see them easily. There we go. All right. Now, let's take a look at this Blenny. He is beautiful. I'm sure he's hiding. There's a little skillet fish. All right, I'm gonna release him in the tank and let him go back in the shell, but real quick, look at the colors on this guy. Isn't he pretty? Just stunning. Casmodes Boschianus. Stripe plenty. This is a breeding male. All right, we're at Kent Narrow's boat ramp, sitting under a bridge. Uh, we're not in any danger or anything like that. There is, there are, it's raining and there's storms. And we're going to check out this spot a little bit and see if we can find some fish. But, you know, I'm not very confident about this stop. There's uh, a lot of riprap here and it's tough to find stuff. Plus it's pouring down rain. I don't know if I want to stand out there in the middle of the rain. So um, we're going to wait it out. Traffic is really bad. There's a major accident on the, the only highway that goes home across the Chesapeake Bay Bridge. So... We're just going to play it cool, and maybe if we get a chance to catch more fish, we will. We had a great day. Um, got several of our target species, adult size. But everything we were looking for the last two trips, we got this time. So we got, I don't know, three decent blennies, two big males and a female. So we're really happy with that. So anyway, uh, sorry about my hand getting away of the camera there. Um, I'm gonna get out and check it out. And if we get anything, I'll get back to you. Hey everyone, this is a follow up to the uh, last segment of the video where we were collecting, uh, we were waiting for the weather to clear. Uh, there were tornado warnings just across on the other side of the bay, but they headed, the tornadoes and the storms headed southeast of us and missed Ken Island. So we were sitting under the Kent Narrows Bridge and uh, tried a little bit of collecting there. I had some experience trying there in the past, but we never really did that well. Um, 
the habitat's not right. The bottom's muddy there. There's lots of bulkheads and deep water. And and then where people fish, there's uh, it's all riprap. There was line with people because anybody that wanted to fish was trying to get out of the rain and hide under the bridge. So, and anyway, all along there, it's riprap and it's very hard to use a dip net around that. The dip net gets caught on the rocks and you really don't, you know, you're not gonna catch fish trying to coax them out of the, the holes in the, in the riprap. So they're there, but maybe the fish traps might've worked, I don't know. But we decided to leave because we noticed that traffic started to ease up a little bit on the local road and heading west and we so we took that and we decided to go back to where we started um we did catch fish we caught uh, you know mama chogs and more skillet fish uh some gobies caught some small american eels um you know no, nothing worth keeping um but uh and then we were just beat, uh, you know, dragging that net all day. And, you know, I wanted to get a segment of Glenn catching fish on his uh, ice fishing rod. Um, but uh, just time escapes you. You get busy and you're trying to do things. And so we uh, decided to brave the traffic and and we got in line. And by then they had cleared the, there was a tractor trailer that overturned and took out some power lines um you know 13 miles west of where we were on the other side of the bay bridge and uh they had cleared it off to the shoulder open the lanes up and but try you know of course everybody's rubbernecking and looking at the accident so that was uh we finally made it home i got home around 10 30 that night and uh took care of i was up till three in the morning trying to figure out how to take care of these fish um, I had to, to make special accommodations to quarantine them because they're all different sizes. As you know, the fish, the blennies and skillet fish that we caught last time were really tiny. And now we have full size adults, so can't mix them together because they'll eat one another. Um, you know, the big skillet fish will eat the little blennies and the big blennies will eat the little skillet fish, for example. Um, I also, we brought home uh, several spot that Glenn caught with hook by hook and line. Um, and we got a bunch of mama chogs, some that he caught by hook and line, but a lot of them came out of the minnow trap. Um, I don't know. I think I got about eight or nine of them and four or five spot maybe. And I'll show you little uh, clips of everything we brought home and my quarantine setup. And I'll give you a brief update of where I am with the oyster reef tank. Um, I have a little bit more plumbing to do. I have to plumb the return back to the tank. And then uh, in 24 hours, I will be ready to test it with water. Um, so stay tuned for the next segment um, on the oyster reef update and a review of the quarantine fish that we collected and recently. This was formerly my freshwater quarantine tank. I've now converted it to brackish. And you can see it has spot and uh, small spot which are perfect bait fish for fishing for stripers, but I figured they'd look good in the oyster reef tank, so I decided to keep a, a few of them. Um, got some mama chogs. These are disease magnets. They just carry every kind of disease known to fish. So um, that's why I put the spot and the mama chogs in this tank separately to quarantine them, because I'm going to bombard them with medication. Um, when they go into the oyster reef tank, I want to make sure these guys do well so I'm going to start out with copper I have to go buy some I'm out of it so I'm going to treat these guys with copper and then uh, um, eventually they'll be ready for the tank um, and then here's my existing quarantine tank so the gobies this is a 20 gallon tank but the other one's a 20 long this is a 20 high um, you can see there are gobies in here and there's one of the skillet fish we collected yesterday, sticking to the glass. Um, back in the back, there's a female, the female striped blenny we caught. Um, let's see, there's the, one of the male striped blennies looking at his backside. He's hiding in the PVC pipe. I have another male striped blenny in there. 
you might be able to see his head poking out over top. There he is. They're not really acclimated to, uh, I can't get it to focus on him. wants to focus on the PVC pipe in front. Anyway, you get an idea that he's back there. Um, there you can see his head poking out. Um, and there's a big giant skillet fish in here somewhere, but I don't know where he is at the moment. Um, there's a naked goby. Put a little food in there, so they're uh, they all ate a little bit. So that's a that's always a good sign. Um, we're gonna zoom back out. So that's my quarantine setup. For, and then, so what happened to the little guys? I have this little two and a half gallon tank. Actually, there's a little naked goby we caught. It didn't mean to bring him home. He just happened to be in some of the. the I brought home some algae called ulva which I'm going to use in my refugium and uh, he happened to be there uh, there's a little skillet fish and the little go the blenny's in there somewhere I don't know where he is right at the moment um, but so a little two and a half gallon tank set up for them so I have three quarantine tanks one two three Let's go take a look at the uh, of the red oyster reef tank, and then oh, there's the hole I cut in the wall. I've got it trimmed with a a piece of trim, but I got to figure out. I don't like the look of the the openness in there, so I got to figure out a way to make that look a little nicer. Um, the tape can come off. That I just and when I caulked that in, I didn't want uh, it to come loose. Um, but I used flex hose. Um, I have to clean that up a little bit and make it a little neater, but that's basically the plumbing to the sump. I plumbed in the, that's going to go to my water changing station once I get that. And that's going to actually be where this quarantine tank is. Um, if I decide to have another quarantine tank like this, I will move it and I will need one to quarantine freshwater fish anyway. So I don't know where I'm going to keep that, but we'll worry about that later. But that's my sump. And uh, let's go, I'll show you the rest. This is the uh, existing 20 gallon oyster reef tank. Added more critters. Uh, there's lots of barnacles and shells. Holy cow, look at the size of the, the mud crab sitting there. He's, he's been eating, he eats the barnacles. That's a big mud crab. That's uh, a brown, I mean a black fingered mud crab. Um, there's a shell with a live oyster on it, and then there's a skillet fish right. You can see his tail wagging. There might be two skillet fish in there. I bet they're breeding. Um, but that crab's, but he moves things around. That's why you have to glue things together. But he'll he'll wind up eating the bar, the smaller barnacles. Um, but a lot of this rock has mussels on it. These were the shells that had the eggs in them. Um, I wonder if I can get a light and we can see those eggs so I brought home some more shrimp um, there's the ulva that's the it's a macro algae got a bunch of that in here um, I hope to keep that alive so there's a skillet fish he's laid eggs he's guarding eggs he didn't lay them that's a male he's guarding the eggs that are in that shell um, And let's see, a um, couple sheep's head minnows in the tank. I'd like to get more of them for the big tank. Yeah, they're definitely breeding. Look at this. I wish I could turn that around, but oh, of course the minute I bring the camera down there. You can see the tail of one and then the head of the other came out. So when they come out, I'll show you again. But um, pretty cool. All right, let me get a light and we'll shine into the into those oyster reef tanks so you can see the, the blenny eggs. And maybe we can see the uh, skillet fish eggs that he's guarding. I'm gonna have to move that one oyster shell that the, the big crab um, moved. 
Now he's a monster. He can he can really lift a lot. So another good thing about adding all this ulva, I'm sure there's lots of little tiny copepods in the tank. Kind of replenish them. So um, I wanted to have lots of shrimp in the tank. Eventually I'll, I'll get more uh, for the big tank because I want that to be loaded with shrimp because in, in the oyster reef environment, they are everywhere. So, all right. Before I Hold go on. any further, um, just to let you know, I, the, the river tank was over here, so things were in disarray. The river tank was over here, and I had those nice pictures up for my fish room. I hung the, uh, the, those fish, the sculpture, which I thought was really cool. Well, I moved the oyster reef tank to center it. Um, you can see I've added the, aquas the hardscape for the oysters. Um, I still have a little bit of work to do to the stand. There's the hole in the wall where the plumbing goes. So I've completed the, the plumbing. It's kind of a bean animal type style. Um, I've got some work to do with the trip. The, I mean, the, the trim on the tank. Um, I have to hang the lights as well. Um, so that's, that's the update. So here's the river tank over here. And those pictures that were on the wall to the left are going to hang up in this corner. Um, the river tank's going to... My river chub just went nuts. He's hiding now, but uh, he was uh, not happy with me walking close to the tank, so he took off. Usually he's out and about wanting food, so I don't know what's going on there. All right, let's get that light and go take Probably a look at the clean out. the glass, but you know what? I'm not really worried about this tank. This is uh, a holding tank now uh, for anything that's alive that's gonna go in an oyster reef tank. All right, so there's a skillet fish. He's guarding eggs. Um, let's see if we can zoom in and see them. Shine the light back up in there. Oh, wrong color light. Yeah, if you look in the back, you can see eggs on the wall. See them all? They're yellow. That's pretty cool. And then inside the blunny shell, if you look Way back in, you'll see like yellowish orange. It's very hard to focus in there, but those are eggs. And the shrimp are in there eating the eggs because the male blennies are in the quarantine tank and they can't guard them. So there's a couple shrimp there. Um, I'm sure they're inside there too eating them. And it's a shame they won't hatch. One of these days I'm going to figure out how to, because uh, these the, the eggs will hatch into larva. Same with the skillet fish. And you'll see them swimming around the surface all over the place. The baby larva uh, fish cannot survive without microorganisms, uh, enough of them. And they also get preyed upon. The, you know, these guys will, will eat them. They swim around the top, eating anything that's near the surface. And the shrimp and the crab, anything that can catch those little baby fish will eat them. So you need to set up a, a rearing station. That's the uh, current oyster reef tank. Um, all this is going into the big tank in one form or another. Um, I still have a lot of work to do on that tank, but I hope to have it full of water in a couple days and test it and, and get it cycling and get fish in it soon. In a couple weeks, it'll be fully stocked.